All right, we're back. So this is where we left off um, with, I have my low setup and my high res setup. So let's go and look at our cops net. So this is looking at that, that end preview again. And so we can see that this is my low res mesh and all of this coloring and stuff, that's all coming from, uh, from, from masking from the bake and then doing just like a really quick, silly, like look dev um, down, down the pipe. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay. So I did learn, <laughs> I've been learning from my kind of exploration here. So really, so if you look at my in low here, so this is my in low and you can see that this use external SOP is turned off um, because if I come inside of here, I have a merge and I've pointed the object of this merge to, um, to this guy here. So basically you would right click and say, copy parameter, and then you go in here, drop down a merge, right click and say, paste relative reference, right? So this is it's a, this is a quick mechanism for me to know exactly from the outside what I'm looking at on the inside. So this is kind of like pre-processing your mesh before you, you send it in. And really the only thing I did is just give it this poly frame um, that just, uh, that, and that's going to work with the neural map conversion. Um, so the world space neural map to tangent space normal map. So that calculation needs needs that. Okay. So there's the bringing the low and I did something similar for the high. You can also see this external stop is turned off. If I jump inside here, so for my high, I'm grabbing that same that same uh, mesh there. And then I'm doing a um, an ambient occlusion here, uh, the lab's uh, physical ambient occlusion. And then I'm doing a measure curvature. So that'll give me my convexity and my concavity information, and then I'm doing measure thickness, and that's going to give me my thickness. So you can see over here, I have these attributes now. So I have um, I have color, which I'm going to grab. I have AO mask, that's my AO. I have convexity, I have concavity, and I have thickness. So I'm gonna pull all of this data off of off of the high res and then push it onto the low res with this projection setup. So that's that's the kind of in, so this is like gray area. Like it's it's geometry, but it's in, in cops land, which which makes it very confusing <laughs> to work with. All right, so um, so we're going to go back to our low process. So we start with our low, we rasterize our setup like we've been doing. Like this is rasterizes into the UV space. This gives us a um, depth which we don't need, but the ridge P and the UV are, are really important here. And then over here we're doing so that's just let's do Control and Plus make this a little bigger. So we're doing um, same thing, custom rasterizing our our attributes. So print empty prim, empty UV, X, Y, Z dist, one, and then the current P and getting the prim and the UV. And then I'm catching the orange P, the normal, the UVs, tangent U, tangent V, signs, and uh, position gradient. I'm just taking the uh, relative V box of a ridge P. Now I don't, I don't think I ended up using this position gradient at all, maybe. Yeah, except for just like, it just kind of goes, goes straight out. So the position, the rel V box means that the bottom of, uh, of the object or the, the extent of the object. So the bottom, if we're talking about Y is zero at the bottom and one at the top, right? So it's normalizing that, um, that space. So that's why I ended up using, using that. Okay. So next big leap is I need to project my, um, so basically I need to, let's say this is my low res, right? And this is my high res. So basically what I'm going to do from my low res is for each one of these, for each position in space, so each pixel, which has a normal and a position, I'm going to project out and get information from my high res. So the information I'm gonna get from my high res are, could be things like the surface direction, so that'll give my normal, the thickness at that point, which was calculated in the uh, in the SOP import. I can get the curvature, so I can basically, I'm basically just sampling, I'm pulling all of this stuff off of, uh, off of the high res and encoding it into the UV space of the low res. And this is what all, I would venture to guess. I don't know what, no, that's what, this is what most, if not all bakers are based on. Now, mo most of them probably have a lot more logic in them than this, but this is like the bare bones uh, um, process, which is cool that you can like see this like out in the open and it's not like buried in C code or something like that. Okay, moving on. So projection data. So if we look at, so this is a little bit more involved, but it's really like this, all this stuff here is just recording, right? So it's the same thing, prim UV, prim UV, prim UV, right? So here, what I'm doing, if, so I'm once again, taking an empty primitive number, 
I'm taking my hit, hit P, so that's my hit, the, the position in which the ray hits the high res, my hit UV, that's the UV that it hits, and then I have my my ray, right? So I'm I'm projecting from my normals. So and then I'm multiplying those by 10. So the normal is really long because uh, the way the intersect function works, right? It won't pick up anything unless the ray goes past or to that surface. So I'm just taking my in and I'm scaling it out. I'm just like stretching that in out. So make sure it hits hits the uh, hits the high res from the low res. And then my projection origin here, what I'm doing. So basically, this is my ridge P, right? like some, some point in space, like this. So let's say that's my ridge P, and then my normal is something like, like this, right? So what I'm doing in this project origin is I'm taking my ridge P and I'm adding it to some negative value of N plus a soft set, right? So basically I'm taking this point and moving it, like if this is N, I'm moving it back down here. Right? And so what this is doing, the effect that this is, is if this is my surface, I'm basically shrinking my, uh, my, I'm shrinking my low res a little bit. And then on my, this new computed in, I'm like looking way, way out here. Right? So if that's my low res, if that orange is my low res, then, you know, my blue could be my high res, something like this. Right. It's hard. It's, it's, this is like mind bending stuff. Like if you're not and if you're squeamish right now, if you're like, oh, I don't like this is a lot of math. Like this is how computer graphics is done to 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 a very large extent. It's a, it's a lot of visualizing math. Notice I don't have any really numbers in here. It's just functions and what they return. Right. So that's what that's doing. So that just allows me to like shrink or grow my 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 um my low res. And if you look in Substance Painter in other you know, uh, other applications, you can give it a cage file. So you're kind of bloating or shrinking your low res. That's basically what this is doing. It's just building this mathematical cage of the low res. And like, I don't have to have any extra information. I don't have to have any, I don't really have to have any other information other than the point in which way it's uh, facing. And I can slide that point along that, um, which is pretty dope in, in my opinion. Okay. So I'm using this intersect again. So remember, uh, the intersect, it returns the primitive that it hit, right? It gives, I need a geometry to intersect against. So that's my high res, right? My ray origin is that shrunk or um, that bloated or shrunk um, cage mesh, wherever that is. My ray is my, this ray. So it's the normal map times uh, the normal, <laughs> normal direction times 10. And then this is going to fill hit point and hit UV. So it has all that stuff for me. Okay, so this just like our the displacement map uh, walkthrough that would that I went over the last couple of videos. Um, so basically, this is just checking. It says if prim is negative one, right? If it's lower than zero, it didn't hit anything. So take that ray, flip it around, and run this again. And if prim is still just negative one, it just never hits anything. It's off in space somewhere. So now that I have all this, right? I have so I'm directly getting my hit prim, which is in my down here in my, so these are all the attributes I'm recording off of that high res. So I'm getting that hit prim that's coming from here, my intersect. I'm getting my position that I'm also getting from my intersect here. And then I'm using prim UV with that prim and that hit UV to collect all this information. So I'm collecting the high res normal, I'm collecting the high res UVs, I'm collecting the high-res uh, ambient occlusion, convexity, concavity, thickness, and the color off of off of the uh, off of the object, and then um, so I'm just taking these out, and then I'm just spitting a lot of them out. Some of them through this median. I probably don't need that median anymore. I'll leave it in there. It still works. And then all these these are all my outputs, just like you have all those outputs in Substance Painter, where you have you know your thickness map that gets saved, your normal map that gets saved, your uh, occlusion map, all that stuff gets saved within your, within your, um, within your Substance Painter file. So this is basically doing the same thing to an extent, but the cool thing about this is it's always live. It's always, everything is always connected. You're not have, you don't have like a blocker that bakes stuff. Now this can make things slower, but you can always cache stuff out and then read it back in if it's really, really slow. So you have like the best of both worlds in there. Yeah. So so I have all this projection data, and so that's going to feed out into 
all of these. So some of these are just like just straight, you know, coming straight out of the projection data. And then some of them I have to process a little bit. The main one that I have to process the most is this world, uh, world to tangent space. So I need to convert the world space direction of the high res that I picked up. I need to convert that into tangent space of the low res, which is mind bending. And um, so I think I'll stop this here because I need to go back into the maps baker and show you where I found um, the logic on how to do this because I'm not gonna lie, part of this code is kind of witchcraft to me. <laughs> so anytime I get with that, I get something like that, I usually go study. I just haven't had time to go study. I was just trying to get it to work. So um, full disclosure, I'm not a CG god. I don't know everything. I don't think anybody does. I'm just a dude trying to do his best. So um, yeah, as always, I'm having a really good time. If you're watching it, hopefully you're having a good time. It's a little rambly. Um, I will hopefully be making more kind of directed tutorials about this stuff um, once I once I fully get my head around it, or at least until I get my head around it and I can talk about it more confidently than I am right now. But anyway, um, it's good information. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one.